Broadcasting the information the mainstream media won't touch. This is The Richie Allen Show in association with DavidIcke.com. Our uh, first guest, our only guest today, is uh, no stranger to you. He's a brilliant man, an American economist, journalist, blogger. He's a former civil servant. In fact, he's the father of Reaganomics and a former assistant to the Secretary of the Treasury. I recommend you read him. And you stay in touch with him on his website, which is paulcraigroberts.org. That's paulcraigroberts.org. Uh, he blogs and writes frequently, daily, in fact. A uh, very pissy uh, writer, and uh, he's got a real shrewd uh, observation of what's going on geopolitically, I think. He's written an article, um, which has been published today, called Brexit, What Is It About? Let's welcome back to the show our friend Paul Craig Roberts. Paul, how are you? Fine. Much better than I'm afraid the British will be. And, and, you're, they, very, and you're serious they, about this, Paul? The EU, they're signing the death warrant. Yeah, I mean, I read you all the time, and you come on with us every couple of months to talk about the content of your articles and what you're, you're blogging about. I've never, in the time I've known you, known you as kind of vehement, as absolutely uh, determined in your writing that this is disaster. If Britain don't get out tomorrow, is that what's coming down the line, Paul, is, um, well, it's not worth thinking about. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, uh, Richie, what's so uh, extraordinary about it all is they're about, the British are about to have this big vote and they don't even know what it's about. Uh, they've been propagandized, brainwashed. They think it's about racism. So if you're a racist, uh, you vote to exit. If you're not a racist, you vote to stay in. This is the way uh, your uh, media and your government has uh, formed up the issue. And they use the uh, unfortunate murder of Joe Cox uh, to drive home the uh, propaganda that uh, only, ra only violent racists uh, are, are against being in the EU. Now, I don't really think racism plays much of a role. I'm sure there's some racists. Uh, as for uh, Joe Cox's death, <clears throat> The Guardian, uh, the British newspaper, The Guardian, uh, after reporting uh, the official line, uh, did say that other witnesses gave a different account. And other witnesses said that Joe Cox involved herself in an altercation between two men. And it was a result of this self-involvement in uh, an alteration between two men that got her murdered. Now, we'll never know because uh, the story that uh, she got killed because she was staying in the EU, and so uh, this racist, violent uh, person killed her for that reason. And that is a powerful propaganda weapon for uh, staying in the EU. So we'll never know where the... the Guardian's report that other witnesses gave a different account, whether that's true or not, we'll never know. But I don't think this is about uh, racism, and I'll tell you what it's really about in just a minute. And but first, I want to say that uh, although probably a lot of British have been influenced by the racist doctrines coming out of Washington which for the last 15, 16 years have demonized all Muslims. You have to remember it was, I, it was the American president, George W. Bush, that says we have to kill them over there before they come over here. So we've had uh, entire countries demonized, Libya, Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Iran, uh, Yemen, Pakistan, <laughs> So this demonization of Muslims, no doubt, has produced some racism. I, I'm certain of that. But I'm also confident that many of the British simply feel like they're losing their country uh, to aliens who don't uh, share their culture. And there's nothing racist about cultural defense. Uh, there's nothing racist about Britain's feeling like, you know, there are parts of our cities I can't go into for personal safety reasons. Uh, that is an indication we've got too many people who aren't really part of us. And this is not racism. Uh, this is simply uh, cultural defense. And, of course, the British uh, for centuries have been fighting off invaders. 
But these refugees, of course, don't come armed. Uh, if they came armed, then the government and the media wouldn't be supporting them. <laughs> so, so much for the racism. What is it really about? It's about two things. One, it's the New York banks and Wall Street eliminating the UK as a financial center competitor. In other words, the, bank, the city and the Bank of England have not noticed they're out there defending uh, being in the EU. They don't seem to understand that being in the EU, what it means is that England will not be permitted indefinitely to keep its special privilege of having its own currency. And if England doesn't have its own currency, it will no longer be a financial center. It will be like Greece and Portugal and Italy and Spain and, and France and the rest because they don't have their own central bank. They can't finance their own government. They're dependent on foreign private banks. And so people have forgotten that England, Britain, the UK, is not really in the EU. It's only got one foot in because to entice the British into the EU, they were told they could keep their own currency. But of course, you can't in the long run be in the EU and not be part of the EU monetary system. Now, I pointed out uh, some time ago that uh, the EU process is a process of political integration. And uh, this has been made clear by a large number of, uh, uh, of people who uh, uh, serve the EU. For example, Jean-Claude Trichet, who at the time was the president of the European Central Bank. He said that to complete the political integration of Europe, the fiscal policies of member states would be centralized. This was especially in relation to Greece at the time. But what does it mean? It's impossible to centralize yeah, fiscal policies if the UK is an independent financial center with its own currency and its own central bank. And so once the British, this is the last chance the British have to get out before they are trapped in the EU. And if this referendum fails, then what it means is the process of wearing down the British and forcing them into the EU will begin. It will be gradual so as not to cause any great uh, uproar at any point in time, but it's impossible to be an EU member and retain your financial independence. And without the financial independence, there's no Bank of England, there's no City of London. That is financial center. So that is what's at stake. This, the New York banks and Wall Street are behind this. This is why they want no Brexit, no exit. There's one other main reason behind this. The EU is a CIA initiative. This was discovered about the year 2000 by a professor, I think, at Georgetown University. He was mucking around in the United States National Archives and found some recently released documents. There were CIA documents that established that the EU was a CIA initiative. And it was done so that Washington could more easily control Europe. It's too difficult for Washington to control all these separate governments. Uh, this one would play off against that one. This one would have to have this special thing, this special concession and so on, like the EU gave Britain to get hooked into the EU. And so the CIA decided, look, if there's an EU, there's only one government to deal with. And it's much easier for us to control. So this was discovered in the year 2000. It was reported in the British newspapers at the time. Uh, Ambrose Evans Pritchett at the uh, Telegraph reported this. I cited it and I think I gave the URL, the reference to it in a, in a recent column on my site. You can use Google and you can find it. You can find the report from the Georgetown 
could have been George Washington, but I think it was a Georgetown professor uh, who reported on the documents he found. All of this is publicly available. The documents are available. They're in the National Archive. So this is not uh, a conspiracy theory. This is simply the facts reported even in the British newspapers. And by Washington, Paul, if I can just interject there, by, by D.C., through the CIA, um, you know, backing the European Union project. We, we mean by Washington, we also mean the Federal, the, the Federal Reserve banking cartel, don't we? And the, 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 the families behind those, because we were seeing that. We, uh, Richie, um, who is behind the Federal Reserve? They're not some families. They are the big banks. They are Goldman Sachs. Uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citibank, Bank of America. Uh, these are banks, any one, any one of which has a balance sheet larger than most countries' GDPs. <laughs> they're bigger than families. But they're controlled by families. We know that. No, the Warburgs, the Oppenheimer, they op control, the Rothschilds. These banks control the Fed. You know, the New York Fed is the operating arm of the Federal Reserve Board. Who, who are the directors of the New York Fed? They are the executives of Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citibank. Now, these executives change with time. You know, this turnover. Uh, you're an executive for a while, then you go be secretary of the treasury. Uh, and then you go be executive for a while, and then you retire, and then another guy comes in. Th these banks are institutional uh, uh, elements and as institutions they survive and that's why they're not permitted to fail they're too big to fail because they're too powerful and so it doesn't rely on the Rothschilds or the Rockefellers uh, any one of these banks uh, dwarfs any holdings of any family but these families have the main shareholdings in these banks you just named though the Warburgs, no, the Oppenheimers. No, no, no. And most of these banks are publicly owned. And most of the shares are in public hands. No, you're right. They are, they are publicly owned, but the main shareholders are people like William Rockefeller, Paul Warburg, Jacob Schiff, James Stillman, all Rothschild Zionists, I would say. But we're no. splitting hairs here, I think. <laughs> we're splitting hairs here. Paul, the, the, your article is outstanding. I'm going to mention again, folks. Go to paulcraigroberts.org. Read Brexit. What is it about? Um, by, um, by, by Paul and you know bookmark that website because there are terrifically argued and terrifically researched articles on there every day of the week. Also access to Paul's books, How America Was Lost, the Neoconservative Threat uh, to, uh, to World Order and the Richard, Failure of Late Day Fair Capitalism. My, it's nice to give a plug, Paul. It's nice to give a plug. Yeah. Look, here's, don't you think this is amazing? Here is the British. They're about to hold a referendum on an extremely important issue having to do with the sovereignty of Great Britain. You cannot be a sovereign country and be an EU member. And they think it's about racism. I, I understand at the moment there are all these big demonstrations in, in uh, English cities about, oh, Joe Cox was killed. This is racist. We have to support uh, defeating Brexit. What do you yeah. think of that, Paul? Do you think there's something more to that than meets the eye in your experience? Well, it's clearly an organized thing, but what I'm saying is how, how can a country's sovereignty be at stake and they not realize it and think this is something about racism? How, how you know, and, and, and even more important than the things I've said, where, what is the main source of aggression in the world? It's Washington, isn't it? Look at uh, all the war. We've, uh, we've destroyed seven countries in 15 years. We're now forcing Europe, including the British, into confrontation with Russia. Putin keeps giving warnings. This is dangerous. This is dangerous. This is dangerous. Nobody hears. Nobody's listening. They're running, in, they're running straight into World War III, which will be neutral. There'll be no more Britain, no more Europe, no more anybody. And they have a chance to stop that by voting exit. Vote to get out of the EU because what does that do? That begins the unraveling of the EU. You think the Greeks want to be in it or the Portuguese or the Italians? No, people want out. So if Britain votes out, everybody else votes out. Now, what happens if the EU unravels? NATO unravels. And without NATO, there's no cover for Washington's aggression. 
It can't force Europe into conflict with Russia or anybody, or anybody else or Syria or Iraq or Libya like it has done. Now, all this talk about, oh, the poor immigrants, the poor immigrants, these, these immigrants, so many of them are refugees, refugees from Washington's wars that the British government supported. So if the British gave a hoot about these people, why didn't they support Washington's wars that killed, maimed, and dislocated millions of them? Millions, yeah. That's why you have the immigration problem. Because your idiot government supported the war criminals in Washington, caused the mess in the Middle East that had produced the refugees that your idiot government says, oh, oh, you're racist if you don't take them. I mean, it, it's extraordinary. The British are going to go to vote and have any clue what they're voting on, why it's important. They're turning it into some sort of a uh, support for the poor, unfortunate murder of Joe Cox. Do you know what, Paul? It's a very powerful thing, the accusation of racism, isn't it, in terms of the effect that it has on people. Why is it powerful? Well, I'll tell you. Well, look. You, because people are brainwashed. Because people are brainwashed. But people are also terrified through the brainwashing. They are terrified of being labelled xenophobic or racist. Well, look, I, you know, it doesn't make any sense on its face, does it, Richie? Because no, it doesn't. No. What are they told? What are these people who feel that who are so stupid? They feel that. What, what are they told? They're told that the Muslims are racist out to kill them. So... If the Muslims are racist out to kill them, why should the British be ashamed to be racist to resist that? It makes no sense on its face. So you can't go around telling people that the Muslims are racist and they hate the West and they, they're coming over here to kill us and destroy us. You get out of here, you little cat. <laughs> I wish it was television. I wish and, this was TV. And, <laughs> you you go can't ahead. do that and then say, hey, uh, if if you don't if you uh, don't like it, you're racist. In the country, you're a racist. It's it akin. Makes no sense. It's akin actually to telling a small child, and you've got grandchildren, Paul. It's it's the same as telling a small child, go and get a cookie, and when the child gets to the cupboard, you say, don't go near that cookie, under any circumstances, and then you say, go and have the cookie again. It's no wonder that people are so. Um, confused and they don't know whether they're coming or going. But it's a powerful tool that the establishment has used in this country. As you said yourself, the fallout I from the murder of Joe Cox. I think it's a powerful tool. I think it's the weakest possible tool. But it's been successful. And what it shows for. is that the British people have a weak... Yeah. They can't see what's going on. It's not because it's a powerful tool. It's because the yeah. brain matter... But they're not getting anything else, Paul. This is the thing on television and they on radio. This is all you get. But they don't, but Paul. They let people who continually lie to them think for them. I don't know the, the answer. The government here. told you the truth about anything. Never. Never. So why do you believe them now? Well, uh, can I put something to you? We've only got a couple of minutes left because um, you've got visitors this week, which is a lovely thing. We're heading into the summer. But let me put something to you. We have, we have national talk radio programs in this country saying that those who worry about vote tampering, those who worry about immigration and all that sort of stuff, that they are tinfoil hat conspiracy theorists. That's what people are told. That's what you're told. This is who you are if you think this particular way. And it has been enormously successful. Look, we have a prime minister who went to Brussels, as you wrote about on paulcraigroberts.org, to say, I'm going to get a better deal for Britain and for the British people. And he said at the time, Paul, he said, if I don't get the deal that I think is right, I will encourage the British people to vote to leave. Now, the psychotic lawyer at the same time was speaking to major businesses in Britain and telling them to campaign to remain in the European Union. Now, if that doesn't get people to wake up and realise just how nefarious uh, a, a nest of vipers their government is, nothing will, Paul. Nothing okay. will wake them up. So they've lost their country. It's their fault. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, in fact, Richie, in my opinion is, uh, even if the British people had enough sense to vote Brexit, the government wouldn't do it. I mean, in my understanding, this is a non-binding referendum. 
And uh, President Obama has already gone to London to meet his uh, lapdog puppet, David Cameron, and tell him in no uncertain terms, there's no possibility whatsoever that the United States will permit Great Britain to leave the EU. So it really doesn't matter how the people vote. The only reason it matters is it, if they vote to leave and the government says, well, I'm sorry, our American masters won't let us, then it sh exposes the great hoax of democracy. And then other countries start to catch on, you know, we really don't have a government that serves us, they serve Washington. Or they serve the 1%. The only beneficiaries of the EU is the 1%. Everybody else suffers. Everybody else pays. Only the 1% benefit, primarily, the American 1%. And what the, what's so astonishing to me, Richie, is that the Bank of England and the City of London do not understand that they cannot be in the EU and have an independent, separate fiscal economic policy. It's not possible because, like Triche says, the EU is a process of political integration, the centralization of fiscal policies. That means no more financial center in London. That's what it means. And the head of your central bank is so dense, he can't even see that when he's out there supporting stay in the EU, he's supporting the destruction of British financial independence, the destruction of the city of London as a financial center. So nobody in the country seems to have the foggiest idea what they're voting on. Well, a few of us do. A few of us do. But you're right. I think the vast majority don't, Paul. There was a debate last night. It might very well have been the largest of its type held in front of 6,000 people at Wembley in London. Let me make you laugh, Paul. There were two central points that came out of it. Point number one, um, a couple of dozen uh, commissioners hand legislation, basically hand laws to the uh, members of the European Parliament who are just window dressers. They don't do anything. They just turn up and get paid, as Nigel Farage has said time and time again. Uh, Johnson put this point, Boris Johnson put this point to his opponents and said, look, there is no way it can be reformed from within. It's a dictatorship. And the second point, Paul, that came out of it was that the current mayor of London is a man called Sadiq Khan. You know that he's a former uh, solicitor, uh, a lawyer. Uh, again, it was put to him, the, the, the supreme legal authority over this country is Brussels. And again, the, the mayor of London stood there and said nothing. He wouldn't argue with him. And yet, yet, you know, the fact we're even having an argument with people about whether to vote in or out, those two points taken on their own merits, you know, you have no control over legislation in Brussels whatsoever and the supreme legal authority over your country is Brussels. I mean, Jesus, Paul, what will it take for people? Well, you know, Richie, it's true. Brussels has uh, got more power than the British Parliament. But the supreme authority over your country is Washington. And the supreme authority over Brussels is Washington. And they do exactly what Washington tells them to do. Washington says, hey, set yourself up for nuclear annihilation. Come on, we're going to cause trouble with Russia. We're going to put missiles on their borders, on yeah. your territory. And we're going to conduct war maneuvers on their borders. And we're going to put our fleets in their seas, in the Baltic Sea, in the Black Sea. And we're going to keep on demonizing them. And we're calling uh, Putin the new Hitler. And we're seeing over and over that Russia is an existential threat to the United States. It's about to invade Poland and the Baltics and blah, blah, blah. And the fools go along with it. I don't know how you... So, now, who, so you can see, the EU, it's not independent. It's just another puppet on Washington strings. So they present to you that the EU is your real boss. Well, they are. Nominally, if you're in the EU, then you're subject to the, to, to, to the EU Commission. But, of course, the EU is a CIA uh, initiative. It was created to give Washington control, and so Washington is the one that exercises control. And it's pushing all of Europe into a war with Russia. 
And that's really the most important thing, more than the Bank of England and more than the uh, City of London. The important thing that the British are missing is that by, if they vote to stay in, then the chances of World War III go up because there's no way to unravel NATO. And that's ironic because Cameron said is that if Britain was to leave the European Union, it would bring about the awful prospects of a third world war, which is a monumental lie, of course. Yeah, it's, it would, it's the only thing yeah. that can stop the third world war is for Britain to leave. Because if Britain leaves, all the other countries say, well, look, it's the most important country other than Germany. And if it doesn't have to be in it, we don't either. And so that would stop NATO, which is an American tool for aggression. And the Americans are using this aggression. You, you got to see it. And they use it under the pretext that, oh, it's the Russians that are aggressive. But we know who the aggressors are. Who, who's destroyed seven countries in 15 years? You've um... and, plus overthrown the legitimate government in Ukraine. Washington. So th this is... This whole debate is ridiculous because the, they think it's about racism. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. The world's going to come to an end because the British can't even understand what it is they're voting on. And they're getting no help from national and commercial media here. Paul, I want you to um, know, my friends, that those of us who work to try and break through the, the, the ceiling of the mainstream media to get this sort of information to people are glad when somebody who has had the political career that you've had is saying these things. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for doing it, by the way. Folks, go to paulcraigroberts.org, bookmark the website and read Paul's daily articles. Have a wonderful summer, my friend. Look after yourself and we'll catch up again in the fall. Let's keep our fingers crossed that, um, you know, something special happens tomorrow. Yeah, keep your fingers crossed. <clears throat> okay, Richard, let me just tell you one other thing. Go Thank ahead, my friend. Um, I was assistant secretary of the treasury, not an assistant to the secretary. An assistant secretary is a presidential appointment. The entire government in Washington is run by assistant secretaries. The assistant secretaries control all information flows, all policy decisions. The rest of the people are figureheads. All of the operating departments in the government report to assistant secretaries. These are presidential appointments confirmed by the Senate. Okay. Paul, marvelous to chat with you. Thanks very much for doing it. Like I said, have a great summer and we'll catch up in the autumn. <laughs> All right. And bye for now. <laughs> Terrific stuff. When I was mentioning earlier on there about it, I wish it was on television, a gigantic cat walked across his uh, computer table in front of me, left his camera on, did Paul, while we were having that chat there. Yes, he's right to correct me. Assistant Secretary of the Treasury, not Assistant to the Secretary of the Treasury. It is a presidential appointee and it's one of great importance and it's one that he held under the presidency of Ronald Reagan and the vice presidency, presidency it must be said, of George H.W. Bush. of the Treasury. I recommend you read him and you stay in touch with him on his website, which is paulcraigroberts.org. That's paulcraigroberts.org. Uh, he blogs and writes frequently, daily in fact, 
a uh, very pithy uh, writer and uh, he's got a real shrewd uh, observation of what's going on geopolitically, I think. He's written an article um, which has been published today called Brexit, What Is It About? Let's welcome back to the show our friend Paul Craig Roberts. Paul, how are you? Fine. Much better than I'm afraid the British will be. And, and, you're they, very, and you're serious about this, Paul? The EU, they're signing the devil. Again, dies, brainwashed. They think it's about racism. So if you're a racist, uh, you vote to exit. If you're not a racist, you vote to stay in. This is the way uh, your uh, media and your government has uh, formed up the issue. And they use the uh, unfortunate murder of Joe Cox uh, to drive home the uh, propaganda that uh, only, ra- only violent racists uh, are, are against being in the EU. Now, I don't really think racism plays much of a role. I'm sure there's some racists. Uh, As for uh, Joe Cox's death, The Guardian, uh, the British newspaper, The Guardian, uh, after reporting uh, the official line, uh, did say that other witnesses gave a different account. And other witnesses said that Joe Cox involved herself in an altercation between two men. And it was a result of this self-involvement in uh, an alteration between two men that got her murdered. Now, we'll never know because uh, the story that uh, she got killed because she was staying in for her. I mean, I read you all the time and you come on with us every couple of months to talk about the content of your articles and what you're, you're blogging about. I've never, in the time I've known you, known you as kind of vehement, as absolutely uh, determined in your writing that this is disaster. If Britain don't get out tomorrow, is that what's coming down the line, Paul, is, um, well, it's not worth thinking about. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, uh, Richie, what's so uh, extraordinary about it all is they're about, the British are about to have this big vote and they don't even know what it's about. Uh, they've been prop. Broadcasting the information the mainstream media won't touch. This is The Richie Allen Show in association with DavidIcke.com. Our uh, first guest, our only guest today, is uh, no stranger to you. He's a brilliant man, an American economist, journalist, blogger. He's a former civil servant. In fact, he's the father of Reaganomics and a former assistant to the Secretary. 